And I will share my screen and we can get started. So hopefully everyone can see my screen there. Uh, well, welcome everyone to the 1718 Student Officer Webinar. Um, again, this session is being, being recorded and a link will be provided to all student officers and chapter officers registered with Global Headquarters. Uh, the recording will also be made available on our VGS website, which we'll see a little bit later in the presentation. Um, this recording will actually be in the Student Officer Resources section, which we'll do a quick review on a little bit later. Um, you'll notice a theme throughout our presentation today of the tagline, Achieving, Now Leading. Um, this is a simple sentence that will serve as a purpose statement, a mission, and a motto for our Student Officer Program, and we certainly hope you'll adopt this tagline. Um, again, this is Christina Ulrich. I'm the Director of Chapter and Alumni Relations. I'll be presenting for you today, and I also have another team member with me. Hello, everyone. I am Katie Zufall. I am the Manager of Collegiate Chapter Operations at Beta Gamma Sigma. If you do have any questions, feel free to type those into that chat box, and Katie will be monitoring the chat functionality for you. Right up top, I'd like to make sure everyone has uh, the contact information for just a few of the key contacts at Global Headquarters who can provide you with resources and assistance. There's no need to write any of this information down, as of course we'll be providing it for you in the slides as a follow-up message, but it's also available on our website in the About section. Um, Katie and myself will serve as the main contact for all of our chapter and student officers. Uh, another member of our team is Debbie Galloway. She handles all of our database administration, so if you've got data questions, Debbie is your gal. Olivia Young is our alumni manager. Uh, Denise Cage oversees all of our programming, and some of you might recognize her name as she actually used to work in the chapter operations department. And then, of course, our CEO, Chris Caracella, is always available for assistance as well. The purpose of today's webinar is to really provide a foundation of knowledge for student officers to talk about BGS, to talk about the society in general, and to provide a foundation of knowledge for members to understand their roles and limitations for being a student officer. We'll also share resources available for student officers as well as other chapter officers provide an initial connection between Global Headquarters staff and this year's student officers, and provide a forum for any initial questions that student officers might have in getting started for the year. So we'd like to start off with giving you a foundational knowledge of the organization. Uh, what you'll see on your screen here is the BGS mission statement. Uh, the mission of the International Honor Society of Beta Gamma Sigma is to encourage and honor academic achievement in the study of business to cultivate and celebrate leadership and professional excellence, and to advance the values of the society while serving our lifetime members. So why is this important to a student officer? The BGS mission actually serves as a guideline for all of our society initi initiatives, and it provides a framework for Global Headquarters staff to identify new and different ways to make sure we're delivering on this mission. Going hand in hand with our mission is the BGS principles of honor, wisdom, earnestness, and service. These principles are actually reflected in the BGS ritual, which is normally read at the recognition ceremony. A sample of this ritual will be provided in your student officer toolkit, uh, which we'll discuss further a little bit later in this presentation. So why are these principles important to a student officer? Well, first of all, uh, they define what a BGS member is and what the society is as a whole. These are the characteristics that BGS and our members are always striving to attain and display. Now, these principles are so important that the first three, honor, wisdom, and earnestness, are actually reflected in our organization's name. As anyone who's read the ritual will know, Beta Gamma Sigma actually stands for honor, wisdom, and earnestness. Service was actually added as a component several years ago based on feedback from our membership base, and we have continued to try to provide additional programming opportunities around that service principle ever since. So based on that mission and our principles, here are some of the society objectives right now. So again, this kind of provides you with an idea of what the direction of the organization is. So our objectives are to encourage and honor academic excellence. Um, first and foremost, BGS provides recognition for outstanding academic performance. Um, however, to deliver on our mission of serving our lifetime members, the society also aims to provide programming and undertake initiatives which will develop our members as leaders. Um, fostering these principles 
um, we hope they'll connect um, BGS members and alumni members throughout their lives and hopefully to opportunities to further your professional career. And so it basically all wraps up into a summation of what our BGS value prop is. So our value proposition is to provide access to a global network of people, programs, and services that support our members' lifelong professional development. Uh, so again, why is this important to a student officer? Well, this is the value we as a society are striving to provide for our members as guided by our mission statement, objectives, and our principles. And it's important to remember, remember several key things from this statement. Number one, BGS is a global organization with members and chapters all over the world. We're not just in the U.S. In fact, the vast majority of society growth will be coming from outside of the United States moving forward. Uh, number two, BGS membership is for a lifetime, meaning once you pay your membership fee, if that's applicable for your chapter, you'll not be asked to pay any continuing membership dues from the society as a whole. If your chapter chooses to use that standard membership fee of $75 for an undergraduate member, then think of that as a small investment that over the course of your professional life will hopefully pay off in space. Uh, the third point uh, that I'd like to make on this value prop is that BGS is shifting some of our energy and resources from being strictly recognition-based to providing more professional development opportunities. And later in this presentation, we'll actually be reviewing some of the programming opportunities currently available with BGS. Um, and in the coming years, we hope we'll be emphasizing even more development initiatives. So as a lifelong member, you'll never have to worry about missing out on any of those programming opportunities. Uh, what you'll see on your screen now is a slide of some key statistics just to kind of keep in mind. Um, so we do have 584 collegiate chapters and growing in 30 countries currently. Um, we have over 820,000 lifetime members in all 50 states of the United States and 190 plus countries and territories. Last year we actually inducted a record number of new members and we're hoping to do the same this year. Um, and we have 31 alumni chapters, which we'll go over briefly on the next slide, um, but very exciting. We just actually recognized our 31st official alumni chapter in Santiago, Chile. Um, so why is all of this, these key statistics, why are these important to a student officer? Well, it actually provides a framework for you to articulate how large the organization is and who we represent. Um, we have members in virtually every country, and uh, in just the past year we've established collegiate chapters in three new countries where we didn't have a BGS um, chapter presence previously, and we're ever expanding to hopefully meet our growing lifetime membership base. So um, please note that new member induction goal for 1718. Um, we know we can get there, and our student officers are, of course, helping us to achieve that goal. Here's that slide on BGS alum, the BGS Alumni Network. So as, as I just noted, we have 31 official global alumni chapters, 21 inside of the U.S. and 10 internationally with um, the Chile Alumni Network recently establishing. We also have um, many more informal networking groups and interest areas. These are, again, all over the world. Um, we'll go over a little later in the presentation where you can go to find a list of the current alumni chapters and networks. But if anyone has any questions on either connecting with an alumni chapter or becoming a member of an alumni chapter, uh, please do reach out to us. And um, once again, provided on that first slide is that contact information for Olivia Young, who is our alumni manager. So how does this all break down for student officers? You know, what is a student officer and what's the purpose? Um, well, a BGS student officer is, of course, a collegiate member of a BGS chapter. They are either already inducted or they'll be inducted very shortly. And they've decided to take on a leadership role within the chapter. So our student officers are BGS members who achieved academically and now they've made the decision to lead. So student officer titles and roles certainly vary from chapter to chapter. We don't have any requirements from global headquarters on the amount of officers you have or what their duties really are. Um, but in general, the purpose of these chapter leaders are to increase awareness of BGS on campus, to explain the value of BGS to potential members or maybe newly invited members, 
to encourage more students to strive to be invited to membership, to encourage invitees to accept, and to increase member engagement with Beta Gamma Sigma as a whole and on your campus. So what you will see is a reoccurring theme that BGS Global Headquarters seeks to provide you all with a framework for these roles and to get you started and help support you. However, there really isn't one textbook um, makeup of student officers on any singular campus. Um, with over 580 international collegiate chapters, it's just not possible for us to have a black and white definition of what a student officer is. So what you'll see on the screen are just some possible student officer titles. I'm sure some of you hold these titles. Some of you might hold a variation on these titles. Some of you might um, have something completely different. We would certainly love to hear uh, what sorts of titles you actually use on your campus. Um, what I will say is, you know, if you, um, if you do find that you have um, some additional students who are potentially interested in taking on leadership roles, um, consider making them a committee um, or a council. Uh, committees and councils are a great way to get additional members involved and to kind of share some of the workload. Um, so if you're you know, interested in potentially starting a committee or a council, please let Katie and I know and, and we're certainly happy to provide some resources for you there. But of course, even leadership has its limits. So uh, really briefly wanted to touch on a few of the things that student officers shouldn't or cannot do. Um, so student officers, of course, can't be a part of the membership selection process um, where any academic information is shared. Um, this is, of course, due to federal right restrictions on what information is freely shared about someone's academic performance. And of course, your chapter advisor in your school will know all about this. Um, you can certainly be involved in the tapping ceremony that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and you can certainly follow up with eligible members, but again, just can't be a part of that um, initial academic eligibility process. Uh, student officers cannot have access to our chapter management system or the CMS. Um, this is actually an online platform that all of our chapter officers, meaning faculty or staff members of the university, use to invite students um, and to monitor all of their acceptance. And student officers can't have access because um, actions on the CMS actually have an impact on financial accounts for the chapters and permanent member records. And finally, um, student officers do not sign membership certificates. Um, signing those certificates is usually relegated to the chapter's dean. Uh, your dean will normally act as your chapter's official president, and your chapter advisor um, will generally sign on that chapter secretary line. Those are kind of some figurehead positions, so just as an FYI. Um, so first thing that you're probably going to want to try to look at doing as a student officer is promoting Beta Gamma Sigma on your campus. And of course you would need to um, you know, have some sort of conversations with your chapter advisor, your chapter admin, again faculty or staff members who are managing the BGS chapter to make sure that what your plan is for the chapter aligns with whatever their goals are. Um, so please do check with them. But a couple of the ways that uh, student officers have had some success in the past is by using you know, social media. So consider utilizing chapter specific social media accounts to publicize your chapter and also to encourage invitees to join. Uh, previous student officers have had success with uh, platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn, um, even YouTube to get the message out there. But again, just make sure you check with your chapter advisor before opening a social media account. Um, and make sure if you do open a, a social media account that your chapter advisor is listed as an administrator or at least has the login credentials for that account so that someone can manage the page um, you know, once you transition out of your role. Um, sort of the same thing goes for the chapter website. Um, some chapters have chosen to have websites completely free from their College of Business websites, and some chapters are lucky enough to get a page on their College of Business website. So that might look different um, you know, based on different chapters. But some of the things that people have done with their websites is, uh, of course, list any contact information for your advisor, your student officers possibly. Um, you know, if, if the school is okay with it, maybe you list your current members and recent inductees. You can link to your social media. You can talk about events. Um, it's a great platform to, to quickly get some information out to invitees. 
Information sessions and information tables are also a pretty low pressure way to uh, articulate BGS's value and to get our branding out there. Um, this can be something as simple as you just have a table with BGS promotional materials available in your College of Business. Maybe no one is even manning that table. Um, you know, maybe the student officers go and man a table at a student activity fair. Even a freshman orientation. Um, you know, freshmen of course aren't eligible to join BGS yet, but why not get the branding out there so that they understand what BGS is and they can work toward being eligible later on in their academic career. Um, BGS displays on campus is another good opportunity. So it could be you know, something as simple as bulletin boards or display cases. Um, we do have BGS posters that are available free of charge that we'll talk about in just a couple of minutes. Um, and BGS can also provide a virtual slide for any virtual displays that you might have in your College of Business building. Um, please let us know if that's something that you're interested in. Our marketing department would be happy to mock something up for you. Um, we would probably just need to know what sorts of dimensions you needed and in what file format. Um, you know, we'll talk about banners in a little bit as well, but customized banners are also kind of a low pressure way to get the BGS branding out there. Um, finally, you know, wear your BGS items with pride. So if your chapter has provided you with any BGS apparel, you know, wear it just to get some simple visibility on campus. Um, you know, if you wanted to purchase uh, BGS items on your own, I have included the link to the BGS store there. Um, any items that you do purchase on the store will be mailed directly to whoever is purchasing it. Um, however, you know, when all else fails, wear your BGS key pin. That lapel pin is provided to you during your recognition ceremony and it can certainly serve as an outward symbol of your membership. Again, just very low pressure way to get that promotion out there. Uh, participating in tapping and recognition ceremonies is also a great way for student officers to get involved. Um, you know, how can this be customized for your campus? Well, essentially tapping is really just um, a method of inviting students in person. Perhaps some of you were tapped and you already know all about it. Maybe this is a new concept for your chapter that you would need to talk through with your chapter advisor. Um, we do find that schools have success with this, whether they're large or small, but it will have to be customized. Um, and you might want to publicize the event as well. So in the Student Officer Toolkit that we're going to pass out as a follow-up to this presentation, we actually have some video links to uh, chapters who have um, videoed and put on YouTube their tapping ceremony. So that will hopefully give you some ideas. We've also had some schools that have come up with some you know, neat uh, ways of publicizing the event and kind of building some momentum. So we'll provide you with some samples there as well. Tapping certainly demonstrates the exclusivity of BGS membership. It's a, a way to get faculty and staff involved. Um, and it's a way to get that branding out there. But again, this isn't uh, necessarily relegated to just a student officer initiative, you'll want to make sure you're getting your chapter advisor involved. Um, student officers also um, can reach out and follow up with invited students. Uh, maybe that's done via social media. Maybe it's in person. Uh, maybe you send a follow-up letter or follow-up email. Um, you know, just to make sure that your fellow invitee actually receives the invitation and that they understand what the organization is. That can be incredibly impactful for your chapter. You might want to help plan the recognition ceremony. Again, check in with your chapter advisor to see what assistance you can provide. And now you might be able to help uh, publicize the recognition ceremony. So again, if you've got a social media account or a website, that's a great place to post information there. You could also send reminders. Maybe you can create e-invitations or flyers for your College of Business. Um, you know, one thing to make sure that you're keeping in mind is BGS ceremonies aren't designed to be secretive. They're open door and other invitees could certainly be included. Um, you know, it could be parents, other faculty members, university administrators, other students, maybe friends of people who are being invited. Um, you know, please make sure that you're checking with your chapter advisor before you're publicizing any of these details or opening the doors to additional participants. Um, but keep in mind that the recognition ceremonies for BGS, they're not intended to be secretive. Um, and we do see several chapters involving student officers actually in the ceremony programming itself. Um, you know, perhaps there's time for you to speak on your experience as a member, to explain your role, to talk about any upcoming events. Um, 
You could invite new members to be a part of the council or committee like we talked about earlier. Um, and we've also seen a lot of student officers who will participate in the reading of the ritual, which again will be included in the student officer toolkit that we send as a follow-up to this presentation. Engaging your fellow members is certainly one of the main responsibilities of a student officer, so make sure you keep in contact with the members um, after they've moved past that invitee phase. So some sample ideas for engaging your fellow members, again, could be to utilize social media, posting articles, provoking discussion, maybe sharing event invitations. Um, some chapters have been really successful with sending periodic e-newsletters. Um, I'll send you a sample of one of those e-newsletters in your student officer toolkit. Um, collaborating with BGS alumni. You know, if you have an official BGS alumni chapter or a network in your area, we highly encourage you to collaborate with them. Alumni chapters can provide an opportunity for collegiate chapters to get speakers or mentors. Um, and they, of course, want to meet new members so that they can have additional people join their group. Uh, if you don't have a BGS alumni group in your area, then consider engaging your university or college of business alumni. Um, you know, if they're in the area and they're willing to come back, they might be able to provide the same types of opportunities as a BGS alumni chapter would. And of course, uh, hosting chapter events. The next slide will provide you with some additional sample ideas for events. But the most important thing to remember is that it's not a requirement that the, the chapters host any events. Uh, you'll, you'll need to talk through what your ideas are with your chapter advisor and ensure you guys are on the same page. But chapter events are a great way to provide some additional benefit of BGS membership besides just that professional development in the long term. So the possibility of events basically are endless, of course, um, but the types of events that might work for your campus vary widely based on your chapter, your school, your officer limitations. Um, you might want to start small. You know, maybe you start by hosting one event in the semester and you kind of see how it goes. Um, you know, one event outside of the recognition ceremony can make all the difference for providing additional value while a student is actually on campus. Um, the events can certainly be free. You could collaborate with another student organization. Again, they don't need to be closed door. They don't have to be just for Beta Gamma Sigma members. Um, and something we've really learned, you know, feedback to global headquarters is that everybody seems to really like service events. And so those are generally fairly easy to plan um, because there's lots of organizations that need volunteers generally going to be free and pretty low pressure. So it might be a great way for you to look into hosting an event. Um, some other types of ideas in general are um, you know, new member and orientation meetings. Maybe it's an intro to the society right, as, right after someone accepts their invitation. It could be before or right after the recognition ceremony, just to get someone kind of onboarded to the chapter. Uh, guest speakers, if you can find guest speakers, those are you know, fantastic ways to get people to join. Um, you can have social events. We've had uh, chapters do movie nights which have been really successful. One of our chapters at Youngstown University actually held a university-wide case competition. So that was a fantastic opportunity for the chapter to engage fellow business students and faculty. Um, a really low pressure way of finding some speakers, if you will, in, in quotes, is to actually have a TED Talk viewing and then a discussion afterward. This has been something that's been in incredibly successful for our alumni chapters. Uh, we'll provide the link to the TED Talk YouTube page in your student officer uh, toolkit. But the TED Talks are generally about 30 minute talks from a subject matter expert on a variety of different topics. And then maybe you find you know, something that's particularly pertinent to the business environment, and you have a discussion afterward. Again, just kind of a low pressure way to involve people and, and to get something going outside of a recognition ceremony. Um, you will likely want to try to engage other College of Business faculty members beyond maybe just your chapter advisor or whoever the chapter officers are for your BGS chapter. Um, so you know, a couple of ways to really engage them is to make sure you're explaining the value proposition. Uh, it is possible that those faculty members are familiar with Beta Gamma Sigma, uh, and so that's kind of a great way for you to make sure that they're aware of um, the exclusivity of the organization and what the purpose is. 
You can, of course, give other faculty members some of the free BGS promotional materials, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Those are things that will need to be coordinated through your chapter advisor. Um, if BGS, uh, if you, your chapter purchases any, purchases any BGS merchandise, you can certainly ask them to wear it or display it in their office or their classroom. You can get them involved in tapping ceremonies, even if they're not a BGS member themselves. You can, of course, invite them to BGS events. Um, you know, it's quite possible maybe they have some sort of um, speech that they could provide. Um, you know, maybe they would like to participate in resume critiquing. Um, there are endless possibilities there as long as some they're interested and they understand the organization. Um, and again, something to consider would be potentially awarding a BGS Professor of the Year to one of your faculty members. That is something that's going to be coordinated through your chapter advisor, but if they approve, um, this is something your chapter has complete autonomy over. So there's no society-wide eligibility criteria for this program. Um, essentially, your chapter would decide what the criteria was and how to select someone, and then once the professor was chosen, your chapter advisor could purchase a Professor of the Year medallion using our chapter management system. It's a fairly nominal cost for that item. And then you could present it to the winner at a ceremony or an event. And it's a great way to engage additional faculty members. Wanted to make sure you all were aware of some of the programming opportunities that BGS currently offers to our members. These aren't necessarily meant to be student officer-led programming, but it is something student officers could publicize to other members. Um, so we do have our annual Global Leadership Summit, which I'm sure most of you know about. Some chapters actually are, are going to be sending students. It's actually next week in Orlando. Very excited about that, but that's an uh, annual event for BGS that's about, um, about 300 to 400 students join us for a weekend-long seminar on leadership training. And um, this year's theme is actually on revolutionary learning. So we're, we're certainly looking forward to meeting some of our student officers during that event. BGS Gives Back is a service-related program that we offer. Um, more information can be found on the website on that. We do highly encourage chapters to consider Founders Week activities. Uh, we do offer an ethical leadership certification, which we uh, can provide more information on the website. That's an all online certification that's specifically for BGS members. There's a master class series that's currently in development, and we also have a chapter on a reprogram, which your chapter advisor can certainly work with you on if that's something that you're interested in. I uh, did want to provide you some ideas of what the resources are that are available for Beta Gamma Sigma student officers, your chapter advisor, of course. Uh, the BGS Global Headquarters staff is always here. The BGS website, which we'll go through in just a moment. There's actually a student officer resources section, as well as the about section uh, for the organization. Um, and then we'll send out a periodic student officer newsletter as well, and we're hopeful that you'll be able to reach out to each other and use each other as a resource. What I would like to do is just exit out of the PowerPoint, and I am going to show you our brand new website. Um, so some of you might be aware that we have recently rebranded the website. That's what you see here on the screen. Um, as a quick note, in case you're not aware, you will need to set up a new login information for, um, for this website. It will be different from the login information you had on the old website. I could go into why, but it's kind of a convoluted answer. So if you've got any questions, please let me know. We're happy to provide you with more info. All you'll need to do to set up your initial login is up here where you see my face, that will normally say login. If you click login, there is a hyperlink that says initial login where you'll provide your email address and an email will be sent to you so you can reset your password for our new site. If you've got any questions, we can certainly send those instructions in the follow-up. A couple of things I wanted to point out for you on the new website. You'll notice here this collegiate chapters section. If you click on that drop-down menu, there is a student officers resources section. This is available for student officers as well as chapter officers, so please feel free to kind of click around. You'll see that there's a link to our student officer handbook. We'll talk about that in just a second, but we are currently updating that handbook, so a new one will be available soon. There's a transition guide for student officers who are going to be transitioning out of their role. 
There are some forms and applications available. These are all just samples. They're not required. Some additional chapter resources. This is where we'll house all of our student officer chapter notes, which are those e-newsletters we were just discussing. This is where our student officer onboarding webinar will be housed once we've got the recording ready for the site. And there's information here on working with alumni chapters if that's possible for you. The programming information is housed under this drop-down menu here. So you can click on any of these and get additional information, how to sign up, um, when and where, maybe past winners for awards. Uh, the benefits section is a great opportunity for you to get familiar with what are some of the tangible benefits that BGS offers our members, so uh, sort of discounts on goods and services. Um, additional member resources can be found here. And that About section that I mentioned, mentioned earlier is going to give you general information about the organization. So if you were asked, you know, who's eligible to join? Or can you tell me about the organization? What is BGS? All the information housed here is going to really help provide you with sort of an elevator pitch, if you will, for the organization. And Katie and I are, of course, here to help and happy to listen and brainstorm those elevator pitches um, and any you know, answers to questions that you might have. So I will go back to our presentation. This is a quick overview of some of the promotional materials that I mentioned that are free of charge to our chapters. Now what I will mention is that these do have to be ordered by a chapter officer, so either your chapter advisor or chapter admin, so those are going to be the faculty and staff members who are associated with managing your BGS chapter. But talk to them about potentially ordering these. They're free of charge and we'll ship them directly to the school. The information card that you see in the upper left-hand corner is a great quick uh, summary of the organization, something really high level that you can use as uh, either giveaways or for those information tables or info sessions. The BGS invitation booklet in the lower left-hand corner is available um, for students who will be receiving an invitation. So there is a pocket in the front cover that will allow chapters to include information specific to your chapter. And then the rest of the booklet actually just tells the BGS story. So who are we? Why should we join? Um, and generalized information. And then those promotional posters that I mentioned are also available. They come in a set of three. You'll see them in that upper right hand corner. Um, they do provide at the bottom, you'll see some blank space and that's strategic. You can put contact information for your chapter officer there. Um, chapter advisors rather, you can put student officer information if you so choose. Maybe you link to social media accounts. You list the chapter website. Maybe it's even event information. Um, there's a variety of, of possibilities for that space there. Um, I wanted to briefly, briefly mention for you that we do have BGS banner artwork that's available. Global Headquarters actually used to offer customized banner printing um, for purchase for chapters, but what we found is that chapters can really source that so much cheaper locally, and so we're happy to provide the artwork for you. Again, that's something you can coordinate with your chapter advisor, but if you're interested, I've included the hyperlink in this presentation, and we'll be sending the presentation out as a follow-up. We already went over the BGS website, but don't forget that it is new and improved. So please click around and let us know if you can't find something that you're looking for. And again, it's a one-stop shop for student officer resources. We will make sure to continue to update the resources found in this section, so please check back regularly. And if there's something that we're missing, some resource that you really feel like would be useful, then please let Katie and I know and we can certainly look to provide that. As I mentioned, the Student Officer Handbook is available on the BGS website. We are updating it currently, but a previous version is available in the interim, so please feel free to access that. It essentially provides basic guidelines for your role and can assist with managing your chapter efficiently and effectively. You can use the Student Officer Handbook along with our Student Officer Transitioning Guide, which we'll talk about on the next slide. Um, and these will just help to make sure that you're having consistent leadership for your chapter from year to year. The Student Officer Transitioning Guide is designed to assist with the transition of outgoing to incoming student officers. And it could, should be used in conjunction with the BGS Handbook. 
Um, most student officers are only going to take on a term of about a year. Um, and when that transition happens, it's completely based on you know, what works for the chapter. But we want to make sure that there are you know, lessons learned that are being passed on and that the student officers coming in aren't having to reinvent the wheel. So what the transition guide will really help you do is to help document things that you've learned and things that you've done, maybe even what your goals were so that the incoming student officers can pick up where you left off. The student officer chapter notes is that e-newsletter that we were discussing. We will um, send this out, Global Headquarters will send this out um, a few times a year, and it's essentially a medium for sharing um, events, programming, um, reminders, resources, and important dates. Um, please make sure that you're sharing your event summaries, any pictures and best practices that you might have with Global Headquarters. Um, we would love to give a shout out to your chapter and to all the hard work that you have done um, using those newsletters. So please stay tuned for those. One thing that we're really excited about um, is coming extremely soon is our Connect BGS, which is an online networking tool specifically for BGS members. This is going to be a web-based platform. It's going to be essentially an extension of our website. So your login for your new website will also be the login for your Connect BGS account. Think of it as a LinkedIn specifically for BGS members. So what we will be doing is hopefully utilizing our 2017-2018 student officers as a focus group for this new platform. Uh, we'll be creating a student officer group where we will invite all of you to become members. And you can get on there and share ideas, chat back and forth with one another. You can network with other members. You can share resources. There's a library where you can leave documents um, and you know, download documents from other people. So we're really looking forward to that platform. It should be available to our student officers before the uh, winter break. And then hopefully it will be rolled out to all of our BGS members in early 2018. But in the meantime, of course, you can connect with each other and with Global Headquarters on our social media platforms. LinkedIn is our preferred method. Um, just so you are aware, LinkedIn is actually um, only manually verified members get approved. So there might be a little bit of a lag time if you are not already connected with the group. I have included the link there for you to request to join if you haven't already. But we do also have a Facebook and a Twitter page that we are very active on. You can connect with other student officers using these platforms. You can connect with you know, fellow chapter members, connect with BGS alumni, and of course stay informed of what using these mediums. So we only had an hour together today, so uh, we wanted to make sure we were providing you with some follow-up materials uh, to really help get you started. So we will be forwarding that student officer toolkit that I've been uh, you know, referencing a couple of times during this presentation. Feel free to share that toolkit with your chapter advisor if they, aren't, uh, they don't already have access to it. It's going to contain PDFs of free marketing materials. There will be sample chapter publicity documents. Uh, there will be materials there to help support your chapping and recognition ceremonies. Um, one thing that we you know, really liked to share was our video samples of various BGS activities. So we have video samples of real uh, recognition ceremonies, tapping ceremonies, some promotional videos. Um, we even have a sample of a video for a virtual tapping ceremony, which the school actually chose to send to students who were going to be invited to BGS. Um, who weren't physically on campus, and they will be much more included in that toolkit. So please do review it once that's received. We'll be sending it shortly after this presentation. You should have it by the end of the week. Um, as kind of a key takeaway, um, I did want to make sure to mention, you know, you do need to check with your chapter advisor about what his or her goals are for the chapter. Um, just so you are aware, all BGS Collegiate Chapters have the opportunity to earn recognition via a program we call our Collegiate Chapter Honor Roll. And what this Honor Roll program is, is actually a point-based award system. Um, its uh, points are assigned to engagement activities and other things your chapter probably already does, like have a recognition ceremony and invite certain levels of students to join. Um, and if your chapter can earn enough points, then they'll earn global recognition as well as other rewards uh, as a part of this program. 
So I wanted to give you a very high level overview of what I mean by that. So there are three tiers of recognition that chapters can earn, honors, high honors, and highest honors. Um, each of these tiers has a minimum number of engagement points. Your student, your, your chapter officer rather, will have the information on the breakdown of how to earn points. And they likely already have a goal of where they would like to end up. And so hopefully you can support them in that goal. Um, and you know, the chapters can actually earn a variety of different benefits. Um, if they are in high or highest honors, they actually can earn one student leadership scholarship, which is a registration to the following year's Global Leadership Summit. So there's some really cool things that come out of this program. Hopefully you and your chapter advisor can work together to make sure that your chapter is attaining this. You know, so part of, part of the process is going to be your student officer goal setting. As we mentioned during this presentation, there's no kind of black and white definition or goals for every chapter officer across the board. Um, we want to make sure that you have some autonomy to figure out how do you want to impact your chapter and how can you leave a lasting effect. So, um, you know, to kind of get you started, you'll probably want to establish chapter baselines. So certainly talk to your chapter advisor about their priorities. Um, talk to your chapter advisor about what are their expectations for you. Do you have any limitations that maybe Global Headquarters hasn't given you? Um, do they have any expectations of how involved you're going to be, the types of engagement initiatives you should undertake? Are there certain amount of, of events that they want you to plan? Um, so make sure you're establishing those baselines. Then after those conversations, you'll want to decide kind of what is your main priority for the year. Student officers are BGS members first. And so as a BGS member, we know that you have classwork and other things going on in your life. And you know, being a BGS member and a student officer in particular isn't meant to take up you know, an, an, a substantial amount of your time. It's meant to supplement your BGS membership. So I also want you to consider you know, how can this experience in this leadership role really benefit you? Um, you know, what sorts of things would you want to make sure you have on your resume? What sorts of things would you want as a member who's just coming into the chapter? What types of experiences do you think you would want to talk about in interviews? And then talk to your chapter advisor about creating the platform for you to have those types of experiences during your time as a student officer. Um, you know, one thing that I, I like to do when I'm sort of breaking down a, a large goal is to think about what, uh, you know, what will I do, what would I do, and what could I do. So the would and could um, are general ideas if, you know, if resources were unlimited, if you had a, a great budget, if you had enough time, what would you do, what could you do. Um, so it's just kind of a way of breaking down that larger priority into many goals. And if you would share your goals with us, we'd be happy to hear about them. You know, hopefully you'll share your goals with other student officers. Um, hopefully we can all come together and assist each other in being successful in our roles this year. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, please stay in touch with us and with one another. We're going to again be providing that social media platform very shortly for everyone to start networking virtually. Um, if you are attending the Global Leadership Summit, we're you know, super excited about that event. event. We will have a student officer meet and greet session at the Global Leadership Summit. If you're not attending the Global Leadership Summit, don't worry, you're not going to miss anything. We just didn't want to miss out on an opportunity to put some faces with names since we were all you know, going to happen to be in the same place at the same time. That student officer meet and greet is going to take place at the Global Leadership Summit on Thursday evening, that's November 2nd. And it will immediately follow the event's evening's programming and will be in the general session space. So again, if you're attending and you'd like to stay for the meet and greet, um, so you'll just stay put while everyone else um, you know, is released for the night. We won't keep you very long, just wanted to kind of meet each other and put faces with names. Um, let us know what resources you might need. Um, again, we're trying to set up a good foundation for you to get started, but we know that what we have here is not all inclusive. So please make sure that you let us know, um, and we can certainly brainstorm some additional resources. Definitely stay tuned for more student officer programming and, and initiatives. Those will be coming soon, and, and certainly keep us posted on what you're doing on your campus and what you might need from us. If you can, send your best practices, any event information, photos, things like that to the general BGS email address that you see at the bottom of your screen. We will be monitoring that and um, hopefully we'll have some great best practices and photos and, and some bragging that we can do on our student officers' hard work 
uh, very soon. So again, I do want to thank you all for taking about an hour out of your afternoon today to meet with us. We had a pretty good turnout and we'll be passing this along to um, all of our members very soon. Um, if you do have any questions, please follow up with us. And uh, we really appreciate you guys taking the time this afternoon. Uh, I see there is at least one question down here in the chat box, so we will be following up on that question if Katie has written it down. Oh, it's your question. Um, so we will follow up on that, and we'll be sending plenty of resources in the follow-up message. So thank you all so much. We hope you have a fantastic afternoon.